Hello there, hola, I'm uh, Germán Rich from Granizo, Cervecería Granizo in Chile. Uh, we have a brewery down there uh, since 2011, so it's been uh, now 11 years uh, going on in Chile, craft beer scene. Uh, we are two partners. Uh, we have a team of seven people, and we basically do everything from lagers to IPAs to stouts and to wild beers. We're fairly small still, uh, so we usually do like uh, like 15,000 liters per month. So fairly small. Uh, what's unique about us is being in Chile, uh, which is quite new to the craft beer scene. We so we barrel aged around. 30 to 35 percent of our production. Uh, Chile is a wine country, so we have like fairly easy access to barrels down there, and we have very good friends in the wine industry. So our, our barrel room right now is about like 200 barrels, uh, including one footer, one more to to come, uh, and also within the uh, barrel uh, program, we have a couple like 12 barrels that come from like the very south uh, part of Chile, the Patagonia, and those were like 150 euro barrels used by like former brewers before stainless steel was a thing. So they're amazing, amazing vessels. What's your connection with Belgium? Uh, beer, of course, uh, beer, beer. It's always beer, so I've been, I've been drinking beer for like, I don't know, well, I'm, I'm 41, so you do the math, and uh, I've been drinking for over 20, five years now beer. Uh, my first Belgian beers were like early 2000s, I would say. And then like early 2010, uh, I discovered the whole world of like uh, wild beers, of course, uh, Lambics, Muses, and I fell in love with them. And I'm, I still am. Uh, not trying to copy them, of course. I fully respect what's been doing, you know, and going on here for centuries now. Uh, but it's lovely. I mean, the whole story, you know, around it. We've done some spontaneous beer, uh, some others just, you know, start with what's in our barrels. We get some barrels from the wine industry that clearly have bread in it. Uh, we play with them. Uh, in some other cases, it's 150-year-old barrels. Uh, of course, they came with their own microflora. We didn't even rinse them. So they were freshly emptied by a cidery, you know, that's been using them for like 80 years. We got them, we started using them since then. Uh, some good friends throughout the world, when we do collapse, they bring their house cultures. So some of our barrels might get a little bit of that and then we play and blend. Uh, yeah. Since you've been here for Leuven Innovation, you've done two collabs here. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, on Tuesday, we got with our with our newly good friends of La Source, amazing guys, a nice triple IPA, uh, which should be ready like in three or four weeks. Uh, quite nice and very nice guys, uh, Matthew, Nina, and the rest of the team. And then on uh, Wednesday, we went uh, to you say here West Flanders uh, to brew with uh, Ricardo and Glenn from Albin, Albin. Uh, another very interesting beer that's actually a two-part beer because one one part of the beer went to some nice vermouth barrels uh, the other one got like a local Chilean treatment it's a spicy adjunct from Chile uh, which we think will be a very interesting beer uh, like an imperial Lichtenhainer if you want to call it that way and actually next week, we are doing our third and final collab, uh, a very special one uh, with Fantum, with Danny. Nice! So we brought yeah. some, uh, some unique endemic pepper from the south of Chile. Uh, it's a pepper that grows on a very ancient and loved uh, canelo tree uh, from the Aboriginal people there. Uh, of course, Danny loved the idea of adding unique peppers from Chile. Uh, which, by the way, is what we're always striving and aiming for, you know, do things with local products, don't try to copy everything from other parts of the world, use, you know, the wines, the wine barrels, the grapes, all endemic, trees, spices, and that's what we're doing. What's the state of the craft scene in, in Chile? Yeah. So Chile craft beer scene is developing, uh, I always say, Within Latin America, we always like more or less mimic what the U.S. market does with a delay, of course. So I would say like a 10-year lag. Uh, so 
everybody is into IPAs now, of course, lots of juicy IPAs. Uh, some are starting to get into uh, sour stuff and wild stuff, which is amazing because we are one of the you know, first guys there, you know, having a well-established barrel program with wild and sour stuff. Uh, Barrel-aged imperial stouts and stuff like that really works well. And recently, and maybe there was like an initial connection with grape ales from, uh, from uh, you know, a wine country like Italy. So we've been developing some, you know, connections, hybrids, as I want to call them, uh, between beer and wine in Chile. Uh, and hopefully, and, and get me on this one like a couple years from now, uh, we, will, we will do something interesting and unique between beer and wine from Chile. Right? Not just grabbing some grapes, you know, and putting them with your ale, but doing real hybrids, you know, with local endemic stuff. Uh, I mean, we have it all. I mean, Chile is like a big, big country with different type of weather, uh, fruits, spices, grapes as well. So hopefully at some point in time, we will gain our own identity, which is still lacking in Chile. I mean, everybody does foreign styles until now. I guess it's the same as how Chile got its niche in the wine market. It came from nowhere and then developed its own etiquette and maybe the same kind of thing is happening to beer. Exactly, but, but it will take some time. I mean, I always remember when I talk to people outside of this industry in Chile and, and they are like, oh, you're doing beer. And it's like, so what type of beer? And, and they don't know anything about it. So I'm like, you know, you remember like 25 years ago when in Chile everybody talked about either red or white wine, that was it. Of course, nowadays in Chile, because it has developed quite a bit, everybody talks about grapes and, you know, it's like, oh, semi yo, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, whatever. Chile is about, I believe, to start that, you know, that long path because most of Chileans still talk about a blonde, like a amber, and like a black. That's it, three styles, so Colors. to say. Colors. So we are starting to get in there, like some industrial guys, I always say hopefully, I mean, I never say, oh, those industrial guys now getting into the hype with IPAs, I'm thankful for that. I mean, they have the budget, so if they want to do us like free marketing, you know, to get IPAs into everybody in Chile, fair enough. I mean, we do them better than they are, than they do, so I don't complain about that. Hopefully, in a couple of years from now, we'll go from this, you know, three color styles, to getting the proper names, to gaining some local, you know, true identity about, you know, the Chilean beer scene. That's... And how is the network of craft brewers? Are, are they helping each other? I, I think that's how craft brewers yeah. grow. And yeah, grow but then market. again, it's okay. I don't know if it's a little bit of like a cultural thing, uh, like a Latin thing, but there is some collaboration, but at the same time, you still see some of the guys, you know, like fighting against each other, you know, it's like, oh, like I'm in, you know, I have like, I don't know, one tap at that bar and you are, you know, competing against me. And it's like, man, we're like two, one, two percent of the market share in this market. Like there's no like point in competing against like each other with a one or two percent market share. Like let's look, you know, above the forest and gain the five, 10, 20 points that you see in places like the US. And you are the pioneers forging the public's taste. It's not a matter of competition. Of it's, course, yes. That's how the craft market grew, by yeah. developing a public taste together. Totally. So in my case, I don't compete against any, anybody, not even against the big guys. I mean, the big guys, when they're now releasing IPAs in Chile, man, they're doing my marketing. Like, they're reaching out to everybody within Chile. So you have old guys now, it's like, IPA, what is that? I'm glad they now, you know, at least question themselves about IPA. I thank them for that. Why should you compete against them? You're, and, you you're, have, and, you have and there's no way you can compete against them. I mean, they're huge. So what's the point of you like wasting your money, energy and everything against the big guys? Use them on your favor, you know? Thank you so much. That was a wonderful overview. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.